Christopher Hay. I'm here with Joey Pasco. We've had a long day. We're finally into the top of the legacy portion, and we have a great match for you coming here for at the Star City Games Open Series in San Jose. We have on your right Jerry Thompson, resident curmudgeon. <laughs> that's BD's face, uh, but that's Jerry right there, resident curmudgeon. Uh, like great player, tombstone smasher, just an excellent magic player. Him and Luis have taken the counterbalance deck. They worked through it. They made a lot of modifications this week while they were staying together. They come up with a pretty tight list, and it's got three colors. It's got fire spouts and swords of plowshares, counterbalance, and all kinds of different things. But on the other side of the, of the frame, we've got Vidiato Wajaya. Vidi is a former versus pro. He was widely considered to be one of the top two players in the game. He won a lot of money there. Uh, along with Michael Jacob, who is widely considered uh, the other best player. And uh, VD is playing a very interesting deck. He's playing a uh, counterbalance deck too that Adam Prozac handed him this morning. Now, VD has never played counterbalance in Legacy before. He's barely played any Legacy, but the thing he's always been known for is his intuitive play style. He can really play well without having any knowledge of what's going on. He's just naturally good. And he's certainly shown it going into the top eight with what is one of the most complicated decks in Legacy. And he's playing a different version than Jerry. He's playing blue-white. He's got some trinket mages. He's got pithing needle. He's got a cursed scroll. His, I think his only creatures are Vendillion click and uh, trinket mages. Right? right. So he's got no tarmogoyfs. Where Jerry is, uh, just four colors, right? Off. Yeah. I think he Jerry's a more traditional countertop, kind of the countertop goyf uh, yeah. version. Um, so he's got the typical four goyfs, and. Um, and this is this is really a clash of the titans here for you. And he also does play two copies of Vendillion Click. I mean, um, Vidi playing two Vendillion Clicks and two Trinket Mages um, as his creature base. And uh, he obviously has a somewhat uh, more stable mana base. But here, being that it's Legacy, there is uh, that the mana fixing is is up to par with uh, about as about as good as it gets, right? So I mean, last week or sorry, yesterday we saw a clash of the titans literally. Right. Things on the board, lots of Primeval Titans, Frost Titans. Here, we have a Clash of the Titans, two great players playing a similar matchup. It's going to be great to see how it pairs out and how their individual card choices influence it. So if you guys went wondering on the rest of the top eight, we've got two counterbalance decks here. Uh, pretty uh, n different, but similar in their own ways. Right. Uh, the other decks in the top eight, we, I believe we have, yes, we have got two Merfolk decks. We've got Thomas Johnson, which is with his Sweet 16 deck. Right, dubbed Sweet 16 by us in the booths <laughs> and, and Twitter. Some help uh, from Twitter. Why are we calling it Sweet 16? Because it is a Merfolk deck with 16 lands. And 16 lords. 16 lords. It's just 12 island, 4 wasteland, no mutavolts. Because don't he forgot need them. them. Because he Not forgot them. Not don't need them. He was testing. Forgot them. He was testing <laughs> his fairies deck. Uh, for extended, and he just forgot to put them back in. Yeah, the story is he left them at home and decided that those slots would be better, well, would be not necessarily better, but it, it, he had to put something there, and he decided to put Spell Pierce in the <laughs> Mutavault slot. The logic there I'd love to understand, but... Uh, so, uh, on the other side we've got a more traditional Merfolk list, Michael Hetrick, a well-known a well -known player, playing a reasonable number of lands. We've got, let's see, Eight, 10, 21. 21 lands. 21 lands. Even an extra land than normal. Yeah. But then we have two goblin decks, or maybe even three. Yeah, two goblin decks in the hands of Steven uh, Podplesky and Ian Bartolome. And then we've got two interesting, interesting decks rounding up the top eight. We've got kind of a junk deck, Tarmogwip, Dark, Dark Confidant, Night of the Reliquary. Um, it's almost like the Green and Taxes deck we saw, except with black. With the black. It's got right. Inquisition. And then we've got a pretty trippy deck. Uh, I think this made top eight recently, last week, potentially. Uh, as it was mentioned earlier, but he's got uh, it's a black-white deck with Stoneforge Mystic, Tide Hollow Sculler, Vampire Nighthawk, four Vampire, four vampire Nighthawks, Nighthawk. wow. uh, Dark Confidant, Mother of Runes, Vindicate, Gta, Thoughtseize, Inquisition. Uh, should be pretty exciting top eight. Yeah, absolutely. And so the players are taking their opening hands, and here we go. Water? Oh, and uh, yes, I'll go get some water, you hold water. the floor. I'll, I'll, I'll hold it down. So for those of you just joining us, we are currently watching the top eight of the Star City Games Open Series here in San Jose, California. This is the legacy portion and we are the quarterfinals. Uh, I'm Joey Pasco. I'm joined by Gavin Verhe, who uh, just went on a water run. Um, and uh, we're watching Jerry Thompson versus Vidi Wijaya, both playing countertop lists, slightly different. Uh, basically the, the main difference is Jerry is running four Tarmogoyfs and Vidi is only running uh, 
two Vendillion clicks and two Trinket Mages. Uh, Jerry also running the Vendillion clicks as well. But uh, both players look to have let off with a top, and uh, Vidi goes straight turn two to a counterbalance, already assembling the uh, the combo. But uh, Jerry does have the Force of Will, removing a counterspell. I uh, successfully found some water on my water run. Oh, right, and have thank returned. you. Look at that, it's Arrowhead water, not the uh, Eco 2 water we've uh, been stuck I kind of like the Eco 2 water more. Uh, you, you know why? Because these caps <laughs> these are like caps. tearing apart our hands. Yeah, it's, it's, you guys at home might be like, yeah, right, caps taking apart their hands. Uh, and the rest of you are like, you guys are talking about water caps during the quarterfinals of the Star City Games Open. And to that, I will say, fair point. So uh, we returned to the game. Jerry just stuck a Tarmogoyf. And, uh, that's it, definitely a threat. So what happened was, uh, Vidi stuck a counter. Well, he 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 played counterbalance, and uh, Jerry force of willed it, and Vidi force of willed right back and stuck the counterbalance. So he's got is that a counterbalance top? Counterbalance right? top on uh, Vidi side, and then uh, Jerry resolved the Tarmogoy. Um, I did not get to see what was on top of uh, Vidi's library. Obviously, not a two casting cost spell because <laughs> the Tarmogoy would not have stuck. Uh, Biddy goes for a ponder. Oh, man. Mm. All right, man. Good time. So the ponder's going to go through. We were talking earlier with Patrick Chapin about that ponder versus preordain, mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually a pretty interesting choice. The ponder's there because it can really set up your counterbalance as well. You know, you can go ponder <laughs> on turn one, draw a card, uh, play counterbalance on that turn two, and then no what the blind flip is going to be for turn three. Also, you have so many shuffle effects that maybe preordain isn't as good, putting cards on the bottom isn't quite as effective. Um, so, uh, Vidi's just going to draw off his ponder here. He adds a sorcery to the graveyard to pump that Tarmogoyf. Now, remember back when Standard, uh, when Counterbalance and Top were both legal, they it really wasn't a tier one deck. It's, um, it's only, I mean, I think it, it became a more of a force and extended. Well, I think the biggest issue is that uh, Counterbalance and Top were never legal in the same standard format. I thought was, Cold Snap wasn't legal at the same time as... Uh, as Kamigawa, no. Because it went uh, Champions of Kamigawa, Ravnica, um, Time Spiral. And it was during Ravnica Time Spiral that Cold Snap was released. Oh, okay. Maybe, I, for some reason I thought that... Uh, I th so, I no, thought no, that's no, what no, it was, right? No, Cold, it was just like three months. Because Cold Snap came out in that summer. No, you're right. Yeah, then, no, you're, then you're when right. Times, it was when, a very, very short period yeah, of time. I don't think there were any major months. events during that period of right, time. Right, and that may be why, but I, I do remember that they were legal for a time and standard. It was just such a short time, like you said. It was like three months because t uh, yeah. Time Spiral came out in the fall yeah, I, I and that. pushed uh, pushed Kamigawa out. But yeah, That's right. There was a short period of time, and, and no one really did it. It actually took a while. The first time we, we really saw it was Grand Prix Dallas, I don't know, I think three or four years ago. When the countertop deck really broke out, it was called Trinket Top back then, and it used Trinket Mage and um, Counterbalance. Uh, and then, you know, as uh, and then Remy Fortier at Pro Tour Valencia really used it, put it to good use. But when his Wizards deck with Riptide Laboratory, uh, returning Vincent Shaper Savant, and also having Counterbalance Top at yeah. his disposal, uh, and it really started taking hold around that time. And since that's, and since then, it's just been been a fixture, and it has a lot of shuffle effects, making judges everywhere very very sad. It's true. Uh, Shad Miller from the sideline points out in Type 2, there just weren't as many, uh, in Type 2 we mean standard, there just weren't as many shuffle effects. So it's harder to get, get use out of it. It's harder to f put the cards you wanted on top always. And I also think people just didn't quite have it figured out. It wasn't relevant enough for that short period of time. Yeah. But I mean, I remember the first time it was highlighted for me, at least, was at least being able to watch somebody play it, was Remy Fortier playing it at a, to, to a first place finish at Pro Tour of Valencia back in 2007. Uh, so, um, I, I remember watching that and, and being very impressed with the deck, and I think, you know, at, at that point it was extended, um, which, you know, now looking down his list, which I, I happen to have on the screen here, it looks like a legacy deck. <laughs> it really <laughs> it, does. It's really yeah, nice, We're looking so. at this extended deck, in quotes, that was played a couple years ago, we're seeing Top, Explosive, Chromox, Dark Confidant, Tarmogoyf, Trinket Mage, Counterbalance, Counterspell. You know, Umazawa's Jite, all the kind of cards we're seeing here played in Legacy, shows you that the apple does not fall far from the tree. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically a Legacy deck, but a couple of years ago, it was all in Extended. <laughs> so, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. Valencia, was that the, that, was that the Flood? That was the Flood the Pro Tour, yeah. They had to reduce it down to two days, and the Flood cut it by a day, causing a number of players to alter or even change the deck entirely. So back to the game. Uh, 
of Delian Click Resolves on BD's side, showing off Jerry's hand, which is a repeal of a Delian Click Fire Spout. Interesting. Huh, yeah. Do you, do you want to dump that repeal? But, I mean... So he's trying to figure out, you know, VD has that top counterbalance active. What's going to be really important here? You know, which cards can you not counter? Is the repeal the issue? Is the deli click going to be a problem? It's interesting. I wonder what level Jerry's on right now because in response he could have cast a deli click and tried and looked at VD's hand and then they would have just legend ruled. But maybe he's hoping that by not doing it, he thinks that uh, Jerry's worried about casting the click. But no, VD just ends up taking the click anyway. And. Huh. Uh, and now has got the 3-1 the flyer on the squad. Yeah, it's interesting because we've got, on one side of the board, we've got counterbalance top, obviously the namesake combo. Um, but Jerry's got a, an active Tarmogoyf, which has been beating down, uh, you know, for the last couple of turns. Uh, Vidi has the, uh, the Vandillion click now if he wants to chump block, uh, because it looks to me by the, uh, by the die on the, uh, on the Goyf is that, that uh, it's a 3-4. So it wouldn't, uh, Vend Vendillion Click would do nothing but chump block if, if uh, VD chose to block. Right. I mean, VD's got his combo going, but he needs to find a sword soon, or that Tarmor Wave's just going to get out of control. And that's what? Force in his hand? For a repeal on the counterbalance. And he is responding, going for the force on the repeal. Uh, Jerry's going to top in response and try to find an answer to that force because if that repeal resolves, so we might be able to get something online. But it doesn't look like it. Just swords Jay's fire spout. Deep in the tank. Look at the judge, his eyes yeah. are starting to glaze over. Says, to figure out what's why going did on. they put me on the countertop match? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, when I was judging and I got put on like psychotog near matches in the top eight. It was just awful. <laughs> Very interesting, I feel though. Like, if you want to become a better player, this is the kind of match you should watch. The small decisions here are just huge. Like, uh, for the top eight of Worlds this year, I think a lot of players just weren't interested because of all the control decks, but you can learn so much by watching how people play in that top eight. It's the exact opposite of the way I am. I see all the control decks, and I'm like, I have to watch these. I can't wait to watch these. I want to watch them more than once. You know, um, when I see a bunch of, like, aggro decks, I'm like, oh, don't really want to watch that, so... I mean, I think there are some really interesting matchups out there with aggro decks, like figuring out who's the beatdown, who's the control, who can come back from a bad draw, or control versus aggro, like, you know, how do you maintain board position, but in control versus control games, so often it's just so skill intensive, and uh, here we go, VD flips on a counterbalance. Yes. Uh, Jerry away. attempts to counterbalance, counterbalance triggers, showing counterbalance on top to it's counter the cow counterbalance. counterbalance thing. Yeah. Um, it was counterbalanced, and so he looks at his top three cards, we see uh, seat, counterbalance, force of will. Yeah, um, I, I guess I misspoke because it's not that I'm entirely uninterested in aggro matches. It's just I'm much more interested in watching control matches. Right. And so, uh, so Vidi's in a great position here. He's, he's got his uh, counterbalance on top. The problem is that Tarmogoyf is eating away at his life total. He, yeah. he is three hits away from that Tarmogoyf, and he needs to find an answer and fast. And here comes Jace. And uh, Vidi is going to look at his top three cards. Hope to see a Jay sitting there. Jace would be the greatest card right here, right now, because he'd be able to flip it. And there's no Jace there. Not a, yeah, it looks like, is that Force? It's a Force Counterbalance Ponder. Okay. Because if there was a Jace, he could flip it, counter his Jace, untap, play Jace, and bounce Tarma Boy, and then control the game. But that was not the case, and now he's kind of in a rough spot.
this game. Maybe after a match. Maybe after a match. Maybe I'm missing an after this game since it's uh, it'll be eight o'clock. Ten minutes from now, while they shuffle. Oh man! So for those of you just joining us, the board state right now is a uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor on Jerry's side that just resolved a Tarmogoyf and a top with some lands versus Counterbalance top and some lands on Vidi's side. Vidi's playing blue white Counterbalance, and Jerry's playing four color Counterbalance. Um, and uh, Vidi's got a game in, it, in what looked like a good position, but that Tarmogoyf's eating away at his life total, and now Jerry just stuck a Jace, and things are going to be rough. That Ponder will help uh, Vidi maybe find some action, but even if he can find a Swords for that uh, Tarmogoyf, that Jace is going to be an issue. So he uh, shuffles pretty uh, rapidly with that ponder. Yeah. What did you draw there? Uh, I missed it too. It's like I looked at, I'm kind of rubbing my eyes from the uh, being awake for all day. Like <laughs> my eyes are, That's my contacts are bothering mage. me. Yeah, it looks like a trinket mage right, and so a trinket mage can go. Does he have a seat of the sign out of this thing? Is that what that is? Yeah, seat of the sign. So he, so trinket mage, which can fetch up the uh, the seat. Yeah. So um, not doing any seat fetching here. Yeah. And his targets are pithy needle, so we can go to pithy needle on Jace. Which is reasonable. Yeah, pretty, pretty good play. Still use that Tarmogoyf. I guess it the, the, does block Tarmogoyf for a turn. And uh, gives him some time to find something else. The only other card he could find at this point would be Sensei's Divining Top, which isn't going to be enough. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is. So he stacks his cards back. Plays the seat. He's got to figure out what his plan is. I think Jerry's trying to figure out what his plan is too. I mean, Jerry still has that fire spider in his hand. Or he might have put it on top of his library. Okay, so he's going to cast so. that trinket mage here, and he's definitely going to find that pithy needle. The question is if he's going to cast the needle this turn or leave mana up the top. And I feel like he's probably going to have to cast the needle this turn because he can't afford to let that Jace be active. What happened with that trinket mage? Did That's what I'm, I'm just, I can't see. Jerry just untapped after trinket mage entered the battlefield. Did, it, did he just choose not to search for something? No, it's legitimate. He probably chose not to search. The reason why is because he just wants a chump blocker, and it didn't catch what the top three cards of VD's deck are, but they're obviously but pretty good. But he must want them, yeah. So here, trinket mage is just, all right, let's gain four life. Which is too bad, because finding that pithy needle for uh, Jace would have been so crucial here. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, but uh, I didn't catch what VD's top cards were. It could be the right play. We're going to find out. So Jerry looks like he has a, possibly that fire spout, is that? Right, that's fire spout you can use yeah, on there that. It is, which he uses, yeah. Going to top in response. Of course. Now we see... Like, I all I saw was Misty Rainforest. Yeah, I saw Fetch, and that was it. And he just resolves... Yeah, so, well, and then the Goyf ticks up to five. Yeah, I don't know how much that matters at this point. But right, it's, it was going to take two swings. I mean, and he knew he had that fire spout from the earlier Vendelian click. Very surprised, but uh, I don't know, it seems like Trinket Mage for Pithy Needle there might have been the right play, but it's hard to tell for sure. VD has a plan, and he's going to try and play out of this. All right. Tarmogoyf gets in for five. Gonna bring VD down to a right two life. <laughs> Alright, untap. And drop. Alright, so he's got swords There's for the Tarmogoyf. Swords, swords for the Goyf. Uh, yeah. He's going to top in response to try and find an answer. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything there. There's yeah. another Jace. If he just had that pithy needle, it would be so good. But he had to keep the swords to get rid of that Tarmogoyf. So he didn't die. 
Yeah, it's a matter of, uh, you know, he can pithing needle to Jace and then die two turns later, or... Uh, well, right, right. You know. I mean, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if maybe he was holding and not casting the trinket mage. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. So Jerry managed a force of will. Yep, so that gets forced. Um, now, uh, Vidi trying to find a force on top. Yeah, let's so see. that, uh, and uh, there it is, yeah. He doesn't even look he, at the cards. Yeah, He's I know. so confident. I'm say, did he, did, did he so even look? confident. All right. So not only does he he uh, counter Jerry's force, uh, he also has his own force on top. Right, and that force would be great if his opponent didn't have Jace active. That's the big limiting factor right here. Yeah. That Jace is going to pull things ahead so far for Jerry Thompson if BD can't deal with it. Let's see what, what's going on. Oh, there's a top for uh, Jerry. He's going to top in response. See a counterspell force will on top of his library. And uh, fetch land, yeah. Yeah. Misty rain parse. Now, VD could crack the top here and counter the top, but he's worried. What does Jerry have in his hand? And I think he, I think you have to. Though. I think countering that that top here is so huge. And, yeah. if, and if he goes and just puts that counterspell in his hand, then he can just play the top out next to an end of counter backup for whatever Jerry's going to do. Oh, what a great game. And for those of you who are just joining us, I'm Gavin Verhe here with Joey Pasco, and we're giving you live coverage of the Star City Games Open Series on uh, uh, in San Jose. This is the legacy portion quite clearly, and uh, it's the quarterfinals. After a long day, we finally got to the quarterfinals. We've got this great match between Jerry and Vidi, the counterbalance mirror match. A lot of skill-intensive stuff has happened so far, and I expect it to only continue. Um, Jerry's playing a four-color counterbalance deck, kind of more traditional build Tarmogoyf and Jace and Counterbounce Top, obviously, uh, Swords of Plowshares. But VD, on the other hand, is playing just straight blue-white, Swords, Counterbalance, Top, Only Click, Videlian Click, and Trinket Mage for his creatures. And uh, he just plans to win with either a Click or his own, Jace of his own. It was a, de a deck built by Adam Prozac. And... Uh, it's been quite interesting to watch play, although uh, Prozac went 0-2 today. VD, despite never playing the deck in his life, which is impressive considering its, its complexity, yeah. is sitting here in the top eight. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a uh, somebody on Twitter saying, Jerry's experience is showing. And uh, it's an interesting, interesting um, observation. Jerry obviously does have experience with this deck uh, when compared to Vidi. Vidi's experience. This is his first tournament with the deck. Now, Vidi did say he he was he played counterbalance and top together when they were in standard. But or as, I think extended. Was it extended? I, I had thought he said standard, but either way, uh, he he's used to playing those two cards together. Right. I mean, if he played them in extended, it's the same deck. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. It's true. Not far off, but uh, I don't know. So we uh, flip this top here. What's going on? So, uh, I think he's that is that top still on the stack? It's possible he stacked it after the top resolved. I'm not sure. So uh, something happened. Whatever happened. So uh, VD drew counterspell, and I was going to try and counterspell. Why didn't he just flip to the counterbalance with this top? Yeah, that's strange. Uh, so he sounds like he uh, he activated. So you know, he, he, act, he activated the top, and then of course, Jace, Jerry's oh, trying to figure out what's up too, to the wow. fate seal. Wow, what a play! <laughs> yeah, but he, he couldn't put top on top because Jerry would just fate seal it away. Right. So he had to activate the top to uh, to be able to use the uh, you know put look at the top three cards. So he kind of activated both of top's abilities. Right. Uh, in res one in response to the other, so that he could get the top in there and not have it. Uh, not not have it be the top card, but it didn't end up mattering because Jerry just beat him with the uh, the Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I mean, I with, with a second copy of Tarmogoyf. <laughs> I almost wonder there if you if maybe it's right. I hadn't considered the Jace line of play. In that case, it might just be right to let that top resolve. I mean, if you can't afford to let you lose your top, I mean, you know, you don't want to see VD without his top on. It's uh, 
No, I mean, somebody just asked something about fate sealing with Jace. I definitely saw the, the possibility of a fate seal with Jace. I just didn't know for sure what Biddy wanted to do as far as uh, whether he was trying to play around that fate seal or what. And that's right. That, adds an entire another level of complexity to the deck uh, from when it was in, uh, in <laughs> exactly. extended. Jace being able to to look at the top card of the deck, um, you know, it, not only obviously you can't do it at instant speed, but it is sort of like a uh, another, you know, you know what's on top of your deck whether you have the top or not. Right. Being able to brainstorm or fate seal yourself, scry, I guess. Or again, in this case, as Jerry did, fate seal away something when your opponent has the counterbalance uh, top. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tarmor Whip seems great in this matchup. It's so important. It's just crucial to have. So, uh, so let's see, we, after sideboarding, <clears throat> it looks like VD is going to pick up not a ton. I mean, he gets Pithy Needle, but the only card he can really needle is Top, which just uh, shuts off his own Tops, too. Uh, Spell Pierce, I think, is a reasonable card, mm -hmm. as well as Engineer and Explosives. Right. Uh, I'm not sure. Oddly, could Moat actually be relevant? I mean, if Tarmogoyf is relevant? I mean, I, I don't know, just just an idea. It is interesting, because I don't... Uh, I'm looking at Jerry's list right now. He doesn't really have a good out to a Moat. I guess he can repeal it. So he's got a Vendillion Click. Oh, he does have a Delian Click. But, I mean, I'm, the main card that I think he's worried about is Tarmogoyf, but even then, I don't think it's worth bringing in. I think yeah. you just have to hope to win the, the game with uh, swords and such. Uh, now, Jerry has Sower of Temptation, which would be interesting to bring in against opposing Tarmogoyfs, but since uh, he <laughs> doesn't play them... Yeah, that's going to be a big issue. What, what Jerry does have, which is absolutely gigantic in the matchup because of his green splash, is yeah, Cross and Grip. grip right. That's going to be quite the breaker. And he additionally also has Spell Pierce as well as a Red Elemental Blast, which is another reasonable card. What a great game played by two great players. I mean, uh, VD eventually uh, lost that in the end. It was looking great for him for a while, but that Tarmac Wife was just really, really taking him down. You want to do this? It looks like they're shuffling up. We should yep, have yep, a couple minutes. We'll it. announce the last clue So here. we have the last clue here for the mystery writer. This is not the reveal. This is just another clue. Another but clue? Seriously? You don't get, don't get the reveal yet? No, we're going to get the reveal apparently. Oh, at 9 o'clock in so about an hour from now. Yeah. So when the article goes up live. A lot of people on Twitter seem to think it's Brad Nelson. All right, let's see if this let's goes see if this along with that. fits it in. He won a Grand Prix last year. Brad Nelson won GPDC. Is that, yeah, he yeah. certainly did. It works for Brad Nelson. Still fits. Uh... It at least doesn't discount him, so I guess we'll all find out in about an hour. Yeah, I but, mean, it, it, seems, okay. it seems pretty likely, but so it's thinking, hard to say. Okay, so let's assume it is Brad Nelson, if uh, if everybody's correct. Like, okay. That's pretty freaking awesome. That is really awesome. <laughs> I mean, just look at the writers we have. I mean, that's so great. I mean, I love Brad's articles. It's Absolutely. It's great to read them. He's put up a lot of great results, obviously, and he always talks about things in a great and interesting way. And if we have Brad, I don't know how he swindled that. But that's quite the... <laughs> It's a coup. Yeah, yeah, I think it is a coup. That's that's one of my favorite words. Yeah, I, I heard you say that earlier. That was yeah. good. <laughs> my, uh, my, like my mama would always tell me, use the word coup when it matters most. And uh, <laughs> now you know this is, is a good time for the word coup. Your mama really told you. Yeah. <laughs> down down in the south, you know. All right. So uh, um, this is a I don't know, just good. Brad's a super nice guy. Uh, I I met oh, him really at is. GPDC, and then I met him um, at. Uh, at Nationals, actually, when we drafted with him. And he was like, who are these guys? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, and, I do. And Big Head Joe's like, I interviewed you at Grand Prix DC. <laughs> and then didn't he first pick me in that draft? Uh, we, we no, were... no, I first picked you. You first picked and me. And Joe first picked uh, Flores, and then I, I picked uh, Brad. Yeah, so third, third, third pick, third Brad, pick Nelson. Brad Nelson. I wheeled him. You wheeled Brad Nelson. I think yeah. that's a... I'll take a wheel on Brad Nelson any day. Magic players, as the event is winding down, I'd like to remind you that we do have some lost in the uh, Good times. So if you're missing some items and you think they may have been Yeah, I mean, Brad is just a great dude to hang around. We, he was in the Community Cup earlier this year, and we were on the same team. I uh, subbed in at the last minute. It was a fabulous experience, but uh, you can go and find all the coverage of it. But he's just being nice and jovial, and I don't know. He's just a great guy to hang around. All right, so look at Jerry's hand. I see a top. I think a soft force of will. And in uh, V's hands, there's definitely counterbalance there, and they both uh, kept their hands pretty fast. 
So is that a Caracas? No, I'm sorry, it's a flooded strand. Big yep. glare. Flooded strand, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of you listeners are complaining about the glare, being hard to read the board state. I mean, we're doing what, what we can uh, to help you out. We'll tell you the cards as they're played for the most part, but, you know, just try and, uh, try and follow along. We'll do as much as we can for you guys. Yeah, it's Obviously, tough, uh, having being able to uh, be streaming live video isn't uh, right. You know, it takes up a lot of like bandwidth. And I mean, things, so. imagine we're sitting here in San Jose, and wherever you are, you're seeing this, and you know, at so many miles far away from where you are right now. I mean, it's crazy that's even possible. Yeah, but I understand. I want to be able to see things as well. Uh, so Jerry with the turn two Tarmogoyf. Oh, there's the Tarmogoyf. This is the difference in this match. I mean, that's what it seems like. It's really coming down to Tarmogoyf, who you know was the was the the winning card in the last matchup. He, despite uh, VD assembling the countertop combo, uh, Jerry says, "I'm just gonna beat you with a uh, a vanilla a, a vanilla creature." I mean, Tarmogoyf isn't exactly vanilla, but I mean, it, it has no actual ability, so it's just a vanilla beater. He's like, "I'm just gonna beat you while you uh, while you sit there with the countertop." So uh, there's the spell pierce. VD managed to manages snare. to. I'm sorry, yes, spell snare. Yep. Uh, spell nice snare for number. the Tarmogoyf. Um, after cracking two fetches, I believe, or cracking one fetch. So, but it does appear to he have. Uh, I'm sorry, VD does appear to have played a second fetch land or a third fetch land. In fact, um, he he did crack one. So yeah, there it is. He's got two fetch lands and a. Uh, Original duel. Um, Jerry goes for a Sensei's Divining Top. And uh, plays a Scalding Tarn. Passes the turn. VD cracking uh, both of his other fetch lands. It was, a, I believe, a Misty Rainforest and a Polluted, uh, I mean, a Flooded Strand. Yep, that's what it looks like. Gonna go get some, uh, some nice duel lands. Talk about good lands. Jeez. Mm hmm. So, uh, loading screen with the shuffling there, and now, uh, looks like Medellin Click's gonna come down. Loading screen, I love it. Yeah, that's what Ken Nagel calls it. <laughs> Lo loading screens. When you're shuffling, it's like, alright, hitting. Loading, yeah. Yeah, one second, loading, loading, loading. You know. Alright, so the click comes down. It sees Jerry's hand. There's a top and a counterbalance there. Yeah. Ooh. And there's a, there's a top on board already, too. Yeah. So we see Volcanic uh, Island. Uh, it looks like... Tundra. Tundra, Counterbalance, Glare, and... <laughs> and uh, yeah, not Glare of Sedula, yeah. just like impossible to see card. Yeah, absolutely. Fully Glare. Like, I mean, I'm pretty good at picking my cards out, and that's literally just... <laughs> there's nothing there. And then a Sensei's Divining Top. Sensei's Divining Top, yeah. Or, and, uh, is that, is uh, that a Counterspell? Looks like something blue. A Force of Will, that's what that is. Okay. Well, it's a Counterspell, but it's not a Counterspell. <laughs> it is. Just true. It gets kind of uh, confusing with your counter spells and your counter spells capitalized. Right. And then there's spells that put counters on themselves That's when true. you cast them, such as planeswalkers. Yep. You know, when you cast them, you get the loyalty counter. Or arcbound workers, we've seen right. today. Right. Yeah. And other counters, as as I said earlier, Chapin <laughs> playing with. With that. <laughs> steady progress. Steady as we're progress as a, as a counter spell. Counter spell. Right. If you guys All haven't seen the card uh, ambiguity from one of the unsets, it uh, plays on that rather well. Ah, oh, great. Gotta gotta check that out. Ambiguity, whenever a player plays a spell that counters a spell that has been played, or a player plays a spell that comes into play with counters, that player may counter the next spell played, or put an additional counter on a permanent that has already been played but not countered. That makes sense. Absolutely. Seems like a logical uh, logical card. Uh, Alright, so that vanilla click comes in. Yeah. <laughs> nice transition into the same screen, Rashad. <laughs> Did you just, we just switch sides? <laughs> No, okay. <laughs> Rashad's over there getting R really Rashad's tired. over there <laughs> playing what this around button with does. <laughs> ran, ran the old transition there. But uh, you know what's really awesome are the new transitions for SCG Live. I gotta say, they look really nice. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Like some of the new things, and I know uh, we've already made some improvements from last week, um, where people uh, people didn't like the Elspeth graphics. So uh, for good reason. We've got we've got just the basics here. You know, with the kind of see-through graphics besides the uh, the names and the the information that you need. 
That's all we really want. And then the nice little watermark over in the right-hand corner. Yeah. I feel like I'm watching NBC, you know? Might as well That's be right. an episode of 30 Rock, but with Magic Player. I want to see one of the graphics where, like, the people walk on the screen and then just stand there. That's what we should have, like, me and you kind of, like, walking along the side, like, little tiny versions of oh, us. Yeah, you know, there's sure, things, sure. and then you could just cross our arms or whatever. And I'd be like, you know, coming next week to, right. to Edison, New Jersey. The, right? the commentators right. for next week, right. And then, exactly, tune in, that kind of thing. Tune in. The, the, the graphics that advertise a, another show. <laughs> It's always uh, confusing, especially when there's a shot that uh, that that looks like those people could actually be walking into. But anyway, so, yeah. So meanwhile, the, uh, top hits the table there. So we've got top top on uh, <laughs> on Jerry's side side of the board there. And uh, click comes in. BD's really good about just bashing with those clicks. I mean, only two of them, but he's just click 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 away. Do you think there's any chance VD brought in Curse Scroll here as an answer to uh, Vendelian Click and also just to deal some damage over time? Down Jace. Counterspell. <laughs> There's force of will. Jace hits the bin, that crucial planeswalker does not yet resolve. Alright, BD goes to find a fetch land here. Or uh, fetches, go find a dual land rather. Card in hand beats in with the click. <laughs> beats in with the click, drops straight down to a ripe nine life. He digs a little further with that top. Oh, is that two is that tops on top? Track? Top something. I think, that, I think that was top top click, but I'm not certain. That's what it looked like to me. Is that what, is that what it was indeed? I uh, couldn't tell. Let me see. Jerry using again. the top again, yeah, top, top, top something top. else. And the camera zoomed away. I think it's top, top, force of will. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> and, man, what a close matchup. It's just so intense right now. All right, passes back. Upkeep. Medallion click. And they're going to trade. Jerry is uh, going to use the top. He's going to, oh, very clever. Jerry's targeting himself using the top. Then he's going to flip the top uh, and uh, draw the top and then basically just put one of the cards on the bottom from the top of his library. Yeah. Just so he can dig a little further. At least I assume that's what's going on. I couldn't hear him if he targeted himself or not. But I, I, I always... Uh uh, I was curious about that interaction with the legendary permanent. Uh, you know, obviously they they kill each other, but uh, you know, does the ability still resolve? But uh, obviously it should. So here he goes. Um, so here he goes. Yeah, he he did what you said. He clicked himself, 
and then use some top activations to manage to uh, to grab a card to put on the to grab yeah grab a card put on the bottom and then plays out another top. Just drops a land. Not a lot in his hand. I think I saw spells appear Caracas. Yeah, it's funny that Caracas would have been very uh, useful just a moment ago. Oh man. So now Another Jerry Jace. with the Jace. Be rough. And he's got two up for that spell pierce. Oh, and it resolves. That looks bad. Ravini he leaves the card <laughs> there. And the sinking feeling starts to set in. So there's uh, there's the Caracas, which again would have been very relevant just a few minutes ago when uh, when he had that Mendelian click in play. So now Jerry untapped with Jace and a top. Uh, right. Says, I need a I need a bigger die. <laughs> and now Vidi's just in Jace lock. He has to draw yeah. something really good right here. And he's not going to draw anything there. I mean, he, yeah, he does have to draw something really good there because uh, whatever it was, chance. he shifted to the is bottom. That, oh, that's Vendelian Click. Is it Vendelian Click? Pretty sure that's Vendelian Click. That's just the card he was looking for. Yeah, with the Caracas, is, uh, that's really relevant. And Jerry's just going to fate Jerry seal says, I'm going to fate seal you again. What do you got? And keep Man, it. Man, it's all yours. He's going to pass it back. Okay, he's but uh, try so jamming this. There's the, there's the Vendelian Click. Um, now Jerry's got an option. Does he attempt to counterspell this? Uh, he, I believe he has, yeah, a force of will, which he's just going to hard cast. And that uh, that spell pierce not not looking so good against those two lands. Yeah, what is it? Spell pierce swords, I think. Spell pierce swords in uh, VD's hand right now. Just lets it resolve. Uh, so there went the second Vendillion click, and now. Uh, VD plays the land, passes the turn. Uh, spell Pierce on top of uh, Jerry's, Jerry's deck library, right now. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> that'll give him a little bit of ammo, but I don't know how relevant it's going to be. Uh, I mean, the thing is, VD's got the fetch land, so he's guaranteed a live draw this turn. Oh man. Meanwhile, Jace though is ticking up, 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 up. Whether or not, uh, whether yeah. or not the top card. I think, stays I think on it's top. sitting at. Is it on uh, eight right now? I want to say. Or ten. I think it's on 10. I think we're two away from seeing the Jace ultimate. Uh, Looks like 10 to me. Or 11. I mean, could, didn't he? did he ever do anything but... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. Yeah, I think oh, he's... Sorry, 11 rather, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, did he only, I mean, he only came down and fate sealed four yeah. times is my guess. Right. I mean, I think it was about yeah, no, four yeah, times. You're right, right. You're, you're correct. Sorry, I was doing my Jace math wrong where it ended up. Kind of silly. Jace math. Jace math, yeah. All that matters is uh, we're getting really close to ultimate for Jace. It's going to be a big problem. Jerry uh, shuffling away. And VD has very limited time to find an answer to that Jace. He's got to really draw a Jace here. Oh, there's Kroos and Grip. But that's uh, it's a good card for Jerry to have in case he does draw a Jace. But, whew. Oh man. Yep, so he cracks that Missy Rainforest. <laughs> Force of Will on top. VD's glad he shuffled. He's going to shuffle away those islands. See what he can do. That's a spell snare, it looks like. Is it spell snare? He's got three one casting cost spells in his hand. Not good enough. Nothing that did, that's actually going to do anything. Because uh, plows don't hit Jace. <laughs> and uh, counter spells don't hit permanents that are already in play. So this is likely VD's last turn. Yeah, looks like uh, VD's run may have come to an end. But he did have a good run. I well, mean, I mean, taking. VD can still top deck Jace here. Right, and I'm not, I'm not thinking it's entirely over, but I mean, just taking a look at uh, at the situation, I mean, I think I think VD, as people have been saying, Jerry does have a lot more experience with this deck, and uh, VD, you know. Oh, yeah, is, is that Reb? Yeah, that Reb will, will not, that Reb should do it. So, yeah, he's got it, he's got it on top if he needs it. I think uh, I think that's game. He untaps, well, draws the reb. <coughs> we'll see it all go out. Jace tick up. Probably oh, that's a Jace right 13. there too. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it's a Jace. Wow. But uh, he puts it on the bottom. 
Yeah. Yeah. Even running Jason will not so save So he, he puts in the bottom, bottom passes the turn. That's we brainstorm. get a brainstorm. Now, uh, I guess he could drop Pip Angel here if he brought it in. That is his other option. All right, so here we go. Uh, right. Spell Snare doesn't hit it. Spell Pierce is useless. And, so uh, uh, I think he's just not going to get the brainstorm. Yep. That's but he, he can be pretty confident in thinking Jerry is not going to brainstorm either, not with Jace. <laughs> All right, he so. lets it resolve. He passes, he's going to pass back to Jerry. I think Jerry's going to slide uh, the card into his hand. And, uh, so yeah, he's going to top first and check things out. Yeah, it all so he's, Jerry's like, all right, oh, that all sounds good. Yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, I think he forced the put the force on you think, top. Do you think BD, being the, the sweet guy yeah. he is, you think he's going to play it out? So he's like, I'm going to tick uh, all right, Jace no. to one. <laughs> yeah. All right, and that's match. See, that wasn't so bad now, was it? It wasn't so painful. Uh, Jerry takes down VD. Some good games, ultimately. Yeah. Uh, good games live, in fact. Jerry takes it down.